In this video, we're going to be talking about why your house is so hot. And in particular, we're going to be talking about insulation and its impact on your HVAC. In other words, your air conditioning equipment, your heat pump, whatever you have installed, we're going to be talking about how insulation affects these things. And we're going to be doing a case study and actually showing you a before and after performance difference between a customer's house that we were at recently. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's a free way you can show support if you get value from this content and it is much appreciated. Now, oftentimes on this channel, we talk about the various types of equipment that you can put in your house and the various ancillary components you can install, things like battery backup or solar and how they all integrate with things like heat pump technology and or inverter technology to give you a more efficient and more comfortable home. But one of the conversation points or talking points that's often left out in the conversation of HVAC is how important insulation is. Because if you have a building envelope that that could be improved substantially with a few basic things. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some different types of insulation. We're gonna talk about which insulation we used in this particular case study and why. And we're gonna talk about the impact this very simple insulation method had and how it dramatically improved the system's performance and why we did that. But the truth is that insulation or HVAC is not so much about blowing cool air in your house or warm air or heating or cooling your home as much as it is about keeping the comfort level ideal inside of your home and the best way to do this is through insulating and through tightening up the building envelope of your home and the reason is kind of obvious right if you think about why they don't make refrigerators out of single pane glass the reason is obvious the whole side of the refrigerator would be condensing it wouldn't be very efficient in terms of its ability to keep the food inside the refrigerator cold and the same thing is true for your home and that's why insulating your home plays such a big role now in the particular case study we're referencing today and we'll show you some before and after pictures and talk about what the difference is. The reason that we went ahead and insulated this customer's home is part of one of the things that we offer is what's called a sizing guarantee. Most companies or some, at least the good companies should offer some sort of guarantee that the equipment that they're putting in will be the right size equipment for your home. Because honestly, if you put in a system that's too big or too small, whether that's, if it's too big, it's going to not work well with the ductwork and things will happen like it will ice up or if you're installing an inverter, it will get air codes that are related to air airflow and it's just not going to work well. And the reason we offer that sizing guarantee is just because we have done that anyway since we've been in business for a while and so we started officially or formally, you know, putting that in writing that hey, listen, one of the things we do different than the competition is we guarantee that this system will keep up. It's going to be the right size system for your home and we kind of define what that is based on general design conditions in each market. So if you're in a market, like believe it or not, for example, in Phoenix, the design conditions for most homes is designed for a outdoor design temp of 110 degrees Fahrenheit in an indoor design temp of somewhere between 78 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And some people like it obviously a lot colder than that. Uh, believe it or not, 78 actually feels pretty chilly when you're coming in from outside uh, when it's 110 degrees out in Phoenix. But in Denver, Colorado, things are sized for about 100 degree outdoor design temp. And we typically do a 72 to 74 degree indoor design cooling temp with a 70 degree to 72 degree heating temperature. That's the design conditions that we typically design around. But in any time, something is outside of that, what we do is we try to optimize the home so that it can keep up and be more comfortable. Now, in this particular customer situation, there were some other issues with the system that may have been causing false readings of like the insulation being the culprit because it was working intermittently. So it was hard to get a good read, but there was periods of time when it seemed like it was working uninterrupted and it was basically running constantly, but the system just wasn't able to keep up. And it was basically running at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, granted, this was only on the hotter days when it was about 110, 115 degrees, which it's not abnormal for systems to struggle on these hotter days. But when we checked the insulation in their attic, we realized that there was only about four to five inches of blow-in cellulose insulation, which is just not enough and it's gonna put a strain on the system. So because we do offer that sizing guarantee, which means we're gonna install a system in Phoenix, you know, that would keep up and be able to heat on those hottest days, be able to cool down to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, we wanted to go ahead and start by making making sure the insulation was done properly before we just rip out the system and put in a bigger system. And the customer was very agreeable to this as well, because obviously more insulation is going to make a difference in the system's ability to keep the house comfortable. And it's also going to reduce your energy bills, sometimes substantially. I mean, we've seen people's bills come down by 30, 40, or 50% just by putting insulation in the attic. And the types of ins insulation that we put in, and we chose to put in in this particular situation, was blow-in insulation. And the reason we like blow-in over the 
the other options is number one, it's just best bang for your buck. It's a very cost effective solution. It's something that's easy to install and can typically be done in a few hours. So the crew that came that morning to do the blow in insulation, but they were out within a couple of hours of setting up and it's a very easy install. And basically all you're doing is you're taking whatever the current insulation is and you're blowing on top of that and getting up to the R factor of R49, which is about 16, 17 inches of insulation. And that will take, you know, the insulation value of the attic from R11 all the way up to R49, which is going to create a huge performance improvement compared to where things were before that. So if you're wondering if blow-in insulation or, or this would be a solution that might help out in your home, we'll tell you about the case study and how this panned out. And we'll show you some of these before and after pictures so you can see exactly what we're looking at. Now, as you can see in this picture right here, you can see the attic is pretty barren. There's not a lot of insulation at all. After the blow-in insulation was blown in, as you can see here, there was a lot more insulation. I mean, you can see that, that it's a much bigger difference between being at four to six inches of insulation versus after the blow-in being up to 17 inches or R49. And the long story short of how this helped in terms of performance, after we put in this insulation, the home was able to satisfy temperature. It was able to reach the set point, which they set their thermostat at 76, which is pretty standard. A lot of people in Phoenix, this is what my in-laws set their thermostat at in the summer is between 76 and 78, depending on time of day, whether they're going to bed or whatnot. But it was able to go from struggling on those hotter days at 82 Fahrenheit and not really keeping up to suddenly now it's able to satisfy temperature and hit as low as 76 degrees Fahrenheit just from this simple act of adding insulation. So there's a couple benefits in addition to just having a house that now satisfies temperature. There's a few other benefits that I really want to talk about when it comes to insulation. And this is something, this is a service that we technically offer. It's not something we advertise or we do a lot of just because it's not our, you know, we're primarily an HVAC company. And when we're busy uh, doing HVAC, we really typically won't pull guys off to do attic insulation jobs unless the customer, you know, wants it done as part of a complete system installation, just because it's not our primary bread and butter. And we do refer other companies to this, but it is a great thing that you can do to make your house more comfortable. And the company that we used for this in Phoenix was Attic Constructors. So I'll make sure to link their information below for you. So if you're in the Phoenix area and you're looking to get in touch with a contractor that can help you out with your insulation, it definitely makes a huge difference as you can see from this specific situation. And right now we're also gonna talk about some of the other types of insulation that are out there and why we opted for blow-in insulation over some of these other options. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, if you're enjoying this content so far, please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button for the algorithm. It's a great way that you can show support and it is a much appreciated. It takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this. So if you found this valuable, it's much appreciated. And that's it. I won't ask again the rest of this video, but the bottom line is let's get back to it and talk about some of these other insulation options. Now, as far as blow-in, like I said, one of the things that we like about it is number one, it's very cheap, bang for your buck. It's hands down one of the best things you can do to increase your energy savings in your home. It's cheaper than replacing your HVAC. And honestly, if you're replacing your HVAC for energy saving purposes, but your insulation is not up to snuff, you would be better off just keeping your old HVAC and redoing your insulation first and then replacing your HVAC or replacing your uh, HVAC with a lesser efficiency system and then doing the insulation at the same time, just because the energy savings you will get from having a better insulated home is going to far outweigh the cost of putting in you know, a high efficiency system if you're not able to keep that heat in or keep the heat out in the case of the summer, because basically that's the purpose of insulation. So the reason we like blow-in insulation is number one, again, it's a best bang for your buck option. It really does a great job of keeping the home cool. And it's just a great way to keep the house more comfortable and you'll get less feelings of draftiness in areas. If you have really bad insulation in the attic, you can literally put your hand on the ceiling in the summer or in the winter, and you can feel the difference with how hot or cold the ceiling is. And so just doing a little blow-in insulation insulation will go a long way to fix that. Now, the reason we like this over other types of insulation, um, you can also do BAT, which is not a bad option, but one of the insulations that I personally will advise against, I've done my own research, I wouldn't have this in my own house, at least not in large quantities, right? And that is what I'm talking about is spray foam insulation. Now, we use small amounts of spray foam, or if you use spray foam like out of a can, when you're putting in foam board insulation as a way to seal around gaps and cracks, that's perfectly 
fine because it's a small amount of spray foam, but the spray foam insulation I'm referencing is actually a two-part foam. Basically, the guys are going to show up to your house. They're going to have two jugs foam that are mixed through a gun that they're spraying. And the reason we advise, I wouldn't personally use it in my house, is there have been reports, issues with off-gassing and toxicity as it relates to it. Anytime you get spray foam done, the contractors will ask you to keep the windows open for like a day or two. And there's been cases when the job gets botched where basically they don't mix in even parts of foam when it's being applied. The foam actually never cures and you can get this nasty chemical fishy kind of smell throughout your home. And basically it's impossible to get rid of because the thing that's nice about blow-in insulation, for example, is whether it's cellulose or fiberglass, you know, if you put it in, hey, you can pull it out at a later date and you can pull out the old insulation. Once you spray in spray foam, there's no getting it out. It is stuck to the walls. It's stuck to the ceilings. That being said, it does a fantastic job of insulating. So there's that as an added benefit. But if you're really going the route of wanting to do something like spray foam, we would recommend instead is getting something like some of the foam board insulation panels, which ship, I think, up in like a two inch thick panel, something around like R19, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head. But those panels, when you put them into a wall cavity or in your wall joist, let's say in the crawl space, you can spray a small amount of spray foam in a can in the outline of that floor joist. And that's what we ended up doing at our house to insulate our crawl space. And I just felt a lot more comfortable knowing that I'm using a single part spray foam that's actually mixed in a can. It's a much lower quantity than what we're talking about. And it doesn't create a toxic off-gassing condition where you're going to smell it in your house. And so you're still using spray foam in this instance to just really tighten up the envelope of your house, but you're doing it in a way where you're not just spraying on a layer of spray foam and expecting that to cure. Obviously, I'm sure spray foam contractors might have something to say in the comments and might say, oh, that's not true. I wouldn't buy it. The science is in on uh, spray foam. Off-gassing is a real thing. It's something you do want to worry about and you do want to avoid. So I don't like spray foam for that reason. I know a lot of other people who don't as well. And it's, you know, I'm a little bit of a health nut, so I'm more conscious of those things. But I even talked to, you know, the some spray foam contractors that came to my house and when they were talking about it, they said, yeah, honestly, we kind of worry about it too for our own health. I don't like working in it. <laughs> and that's what they said to me. So if that's what the contractor is telling you, obviously there is some truth to that. And so I would just proceed with caution. If you're using it in an area that's well ventilated or it's a warehouse or it's something where, you know, it's not your home, hey, have at it. It might be a good solution for you. That is one type of insulation that we stay away from. And that's why we really, in a residential application, we like blow-in. You can also go for bat insulation. There's other insulations on top of that, but really the most common one that is just such a good economically feasible option is that blow-in insulation. And it's very easy to get done. It makes a huge difference, as you can see, from this particular example. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google, as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas, I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way, you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter-driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or in-floor radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region. We're partnering with those contractors, so click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC Dope Show contractor in your area. And right now, there's a few other videos popping up on the screen that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.